Okay, um, in this video, what we'll try to do is this. Uh, last time we have learned how to do GCD. And GCD was when two numbers, um, I can take out what is the largest number which can divide both of those two numbers. Uh, the other concept which is commonly used in cryptography, as we mentioned in our previous video, we have in, in modular arithmetic, we have addition, subtraction, multiplication. And instead of division, we have something called multiplicative inverses. Um, so how do I actually calculate multiplicative inverses? Um, so the rule is this. So the rule is simple as this. First of all, if the GCD of two numbers is one, then they are known as co-primes or relative primes. All right? That's the rule. That's 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 what you need to remember. When a GCD of two numbers is one, they are co-prime or relative prime. Okay, there's also one more thing. When a GCD of two numbers is going to be one, when GCD of two numbers is equals to one, then definitely, definitely there is going to be an existence, existence, existence of MI, which is multiplicative inverse. All right, so when whenever two number has a GCD of one, then definitely there is going to be an existence of MI, which is multiplicative inverse, and we need to find that out. The, the way we're gonna find this out, we're gonna use something called a extended version of Euclidean algorithm. So this is an extended Euclidean algorithm. All right. So we're going to look at an extended version of that uh, uh, Euclidean algorithm that we have looked to can compute my GCD. So same rule, uh, we have our quotient, all right? Then we have our number A and B. I'm going to bring these out and then I'm going to have my remainder. And I'm going to introduce two things. I'm going to introduce another number, which is going to be your T1 value, T2 value, and then some T value which is actually T1 minus T2 multiplied by Q, all right? The value of T1 and T2, regardless of you're doing AES, regardless of whatever you're doing, for T1, it's always going to be zero. For T2, the initial value is always going to be one. That's all you need to remember. Zero and one. So let's say okay, now I have a question like this. So I need to find, so the question is this, find MI of 11 in Z26. All right, so what am I saying is this. You need to find multiplicative inverse of 11 in positive integers domain of 26. All right. So we need to find MI of 11 in Z26, which means that I have an integer domain of 26. And within that number, I need to find out what is the multiplicative inverse of that. And the criteria that I need to fulfill for multiplicative inverse is this. The A multiplied by B congruent 1 mod N. So in this example, this is my modulus, which is my n, and I need to find out what number do I need to multiply 11 by so I get a remainder and take a mod with n, so I get a remainder of 1. All right? So what is it that we're trying to do? That Here, here we go. So 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 let's let's put this example like this. So I need to find multiplicative of inverse of 11 in Z26. All right, where 26 is my modulus, where 11 is my A. So what is it that I'm asking? So this condition needs to be fulfilled. If that condition fulfills itself with that number that we're going to find, we know that okay, this is the multiplicative inverse of that. So the way we're going to do it is this. So what we're saying is this, 11 multiplied by what number would give me one when I take a mod of that multiplication uh, answer with 26. All right. So the way we're going to do it, we're going to use extended Euclidean algorithm to do that. Okay. So we have 26, which is a higher number. 
we're going to put my 11 here and I'm going to start dividing it. So I know 11 times 2 would give me 22 and 26 minus 22, basically I'm taking a mod now, uh, 11, um, uh, so 11 times 2 is 22, 20, uh, which is 22, 26 minus 22, I'll get a remainder of 4. All right, so I'll bring this guy down, down, down here. Then I'll also bring this guy over here. 4 times 2 would give me 8 and 11 minus 8 would give me 3. All right, so I'm going to bring this guy down here. I'm going to bring this guy down here. 3 times 1 would give me 3. 4 minus 3 would give me a remainder of 1. Okay, I'm going to bring this 3 down. So 1 times 3 would give me 3. So I'll get a remainder of 0 here. Then I'm going to simply bring down my 1 and 0 in this way. So this is where my algorithm gets terminated. So recall GCD that we have learned in a previous video how to calculate that, which is uh, if GCD of a comma 0 is just A. So the largest number which can divide 26 and 11 is actually 1. This is where I'm going to terminate my algorithm. Okay, let's go over here and let's try to work this out. Okay, so what is T2? T2 is 1. So 1 multiplied by 2 would give me 2. So let's solve it here. And there is this, I'm going to bring that negative sign, uh, sign down. And so this is going to be what? T1 is 0. So that would give me negative 2. All right. So let's bring this guy down here. Let's bring negative 2 down here. <coughs> okay. What is my T2? Is actually negative 2 multiplied by 2. So... I'll get negative 4, so I'll get negative 4, and then I have a negative outside, so this is negative, then I have 1. So 1 plus five, uh, 4 would give me 5. So I'm going to bring this negative 2 down here, and I'm going to bring this 5 down here. All right, so far so good. Okay, uh, so I'm going to do next. What is 5 times 1? would give me 5, but there is a negative sign, minus, and then there is negative 2, right here. So negative 2 minus 5 would give me negative 7. So I'm going to bring this 5 down here, and I'm going to bring this negative 7 down here. Do I need to solve this? Because this is where, this, this T1 value, where I got my uh, uh, GCD to be 1, this is the value that is going to be the multiplicative inverse of the, my number. Okay? Um, so, so I don't need to solve it, but I'm just going to solve it anyhow. So negative 7 times 3 would give me negative 21. Then I have T, uh, uh, sorry, and then, then I have minus plus 5. So 5 plus 21 would give me 26. So this, negative 7. I'm going to just bring this 26 down. So this value... This value of mine, this is going to be my multiplicative inverse. But now, when, you, when I look at it, how can it be your multiplicative inverse? Now, the thing is this. This number is already negative, isn't it? And I, we're working with positive integers. So what is the rule of thumb that I need to follow is this. I'm going to do my mod operation here, which is negative 7 mod 26. Right, because this is my modulus, which is 26 in, in my example. So negative 6, 7 mod 26. When I have modulus bigger than my number, I'll bring the same number out. I'm going to bring that negative sign out, and I'm going to add 26 to it. So 26, 26 minus 17, 26 minus 17 would give me what? 19. So 19 is my multiplicative inverse. Okay, so how do I check this? That if, if that is right or wrong, I'm going to go back to this criteria. So now at this place, I'm going to multiply 11 by 19, and I'm going to take a mod with 26. If I get 1, then I know, okay, this is the right answer. All right? I hope, I hope you're understanding this. Okay, so this is how am I going to do it. So here's my criteria. I'm going to write my criteria down for MI criteria. So this is going to be A multiplied by B 
congruent one mod n all right so so 11 multiplied by 19 congruent one mod 26 so 11 times 19 i'm going to use my calculator for this so 11 where's my calculator okay i'm going to use my mobile phone i guess okay so 11 times 19 would give me so 11 times 19 would give me 209 so congruent 1 mod 26 so let's divide here 209 divided by 26 so let's do this 209 divided by 26 so 8 times 26 times 8 so 26 times 8 would give me 208 what is the remainder 1 so yes it is fulfilling this criteria so i hope i hope you're understanding this so 11 times 9 is 209 when i divide this by 26 which means i am taking a mod with 26 26 times 8 would give me 208 so 209 minus 208 would give me 1 so indeed Yes, 19 is the multiplicative inverse. Now, what I said in last video, what I said about congruence is this. This is just not one multiplicative inverse. There could be many. There could be many. But in Z26, this is one. All right? So there is a brute force attack that we can do, that we can take individual numbers. Like, for example, we can start taking one number. 11 multiplied by 1 is one, 11. 11 mod 26 would give me 11. 11 times 2, I can do it like this. 11 times 2, 11 times 3, take a mod with 26. Do I get 1? This is a brute force attack. But, but using extended Euclidean algorithm, you can exactly find out what is that multiplicative inverse in Z26 domain. Due to this congruence operator, this is saying this is just not one multiplicative inverse. There could be many multiplicative inverses, but this is one of them. A very important uh, 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 um, a tool um, that we use to find out multiplicative inverse, and we use this a lot in, uh, in AES as well. Uh, when we are calculating or computing s bytes and s boxes normally we normally do s box trans transformation using boxes but you can also use extended euclidean algorithm to do that so i hope you like the video don't forget to subscribe to my channel um, and leave a comment if you have any question